Agency in Motion Continuing Education Series. Once again, this is a series that's specifically designed for agents, producers, advisors, and agency builders in the financial services industry. And today, we're really discussing the power of financial wellness as a business model. And if you look at the statistics, you know, people fear money, but they also understand the value of money in today's society. And if you look at employers who are running businesses, if you look at the employees within inside that business, 60% of the employees say that financial matters and money challenges are their number one fear. Guys, money stress is 24-7. It does not leave you. So if you're an employer that has people working for you, if they have money stress, that can be as bad as alcoholism or drug addiction in the workplace as far as the dent on productivity. Um, at, if you're the employee inside the business, then that's all you're thinking about. So whether you're talking to an employer or an employee, what you have to understand is that we serve. We help people figure this out, win the money game, beat the banks at their own game. And so you have to understand that relationships equal transactions. And when you you know, position yourself as someone who is a financial coach, who is um, bringing solutions to the table that carves out financial wellness, financial freedom, uh, backed by financial education literacy, what you're going to find, like we've discussed so many times before, is you separate yourself from the financial advisors, from the insurance agents, from the salespeople, um, and now you're a trusted advisor that somebody can go to for real answers. The reason that we use debt to wealth is because it's the biggest problem. People have too much debt and too little wealth. So if we can bring a solution to the table that takes debt, gets rid of it, eliminates in a fraction of the time, and then frees up that cash flow or simultaneously builds an asset from the debt elimination, that's really where we want to position ourselves. Why? Because that's what people are struggling with. And if you look at the expenditures, look, this list is not you know 100% factual. It doesn't even include other debt servicing like you know credit cards, revolving debt, personal loans, whatever somebody else has. But if you just look at this chart, Let's say somebody comes to you and they have no other debt besides their home, but it's taking 41% of their income or cash flow. Well, that is a big problem. If that was removed from the situation, think about the tidal wave of cash flow that that frees up that can now go into other areas of the financial plan that are deficient, like asset accumulation, retirement savings. So what we do is we tackle the biggest problem. And by doing that, you're going to get more hands raised and say, yeah, I want more information about this. Yes, I would like to talk to you. Yes, I'm struggling with this. Yes, I would like to figure this out. If you have a business model based around the power of financial wellness and you understand the power, you need to be constantly in a growth mindset and thinking about expansion. If this is a nationwide problem and you have a solution, then you can build nationwide distribution out of this. So don't think small, think big. And when you start to think big, those little excuses that we normally feed ourselves uh, they just are not justified at all. This is a powerful opportunity. So yes, you have the opportunity to go out and reach many clients. But once again, you're not going to have nationwide impact by yourself. So you also need to get in the habit of communicating with people and relaying or translating over to the fact that this is a powerful digital opportunity, whether somebody is looking for an online business, part-time income, or they're looking to expand their existing business, like insurance, like real estate, like CPA, this is an opportunity to do so. So you need to think outside the box. Once again, if financial wellness is a priority, if it's on the minds of people, if money is a stress factor, you just need to think about how do I get in front of the right people? How do I, now that I've separated myself from the rest of the insurance salesmen, agents, and advisors, how do I bring about the best marketing message? Your vision is one of the best things that you can hold for yourself. And your vision is also one of the best things that you can sell to other people. People buy into your vision, they buy into you before they really buy into whatever it is that you're representing or building. When you guys get down to the point where you're meeting people, and most of our meetings are taking place online, understand that you have a number of really goals that are coming out of this presentation. It's not to close people. It's not to sell products. Those are going to happen as a byproduct of what you're doing here. But the very first thing that you need to do is make sure that if you're hopping online, you're hopping on these either online training, master classes, one-on-one -on -one Zooms, whatever it might be, that you make a good digital first impression. So it's what you say, 
how you're saying it, understanding your business assets, the command of that simple technology, and the organization of what you're saying and what you're presenting. So as we move into a new model based on financial wellness and we move into a new model that's based on you know much more of a digital presence over a physical presence, you guys need to make that divide and understand what's important when you're meeting these people. Remember, first impressions are still important, it's just a different way in a different environment. Your biggest obligation on the front end of these meetings is to disqualify. Now, I know that sounds weird, but it's extremely important because time management, sucking the most that we can out of the day is one of our biggest battles. So if I can spend two minutes or if I can spend 45 minutes with somebody who's supposed to be disqualified, then I would much rather spend two minutes. It's more fair to me. It's more fair to them. Protects your time. Doesn't waste their time. The number one priority is to disqualify because once you get in the habit of disqualifying the wrong parties, now you can spend that additional time with the right parties and build that relationship, show them you know, how you can help them, but don't spend time with people that should be disqualified. The ones that are not disqualified, what you want to do is just map out an easy you know, model so that it's you can follow and the potential client can follow as well. So once we have disqualified the parties that should be disqualified, now we're going to identify the customer need. Why is this important? Because in financial wellness, you know, there's a lot of different things that opening up cash flow, opening up, you know, time, uh, lifestyle freedom, financial freedom can do. But you've got to understand the need. What is the most important thing to that person? Because if you're not talking about the most important thing to them, you're not really talking to them. And then once you identify that need, it's easy to outline, okay, this is the need, this is the goal, this is what we're trying to do. These are the requirements to get there. And this is going to help you separate, once again, an area of disqualification. Is somebody interested in this or is somebody committed to getting this done? You're presenting, it's not really a solution, it's the solution. I tell people, hey, I've researched a lot of solutions over the years, so I'm not bringing to the table and showing you a solution. I'm showing you the solution that works best. And then you need to be able to present that confidently and persuasively. So if you have the solution and it meets their goals and needs and you've laid out the requirements and they're committed, all that is what we call the blueprint for success. And I just tell people, hey, I'm going to give you the blueprint for success. What you do is 100% up to you. What is the blueprint for success? It's just showing them the way. You know, This is where you are now. This is where you want to be. This is how you get there. This is how the products, the technology, our coaching, everything fix, uh, fits in to that plan. We are creating maps, making action plans for the potential clients, showing them how to get what they want in the financial game. And then along the way, we are teaching them, don't get emotional about your money. Start making data-driven decisions with your money. When does that start? That starts right now here today on this meeting because we're going to start to create something that puts you at the head of the table instead of the banks and the financial industry. So as you're laying this stuff out and as you're telling stories and as you're helping people understand that most people operate or think this way, that stops with them right now. That relationship that you're building, the coaching that you're going to give them. And the best way to correct that wrong information is to provide the right information. So you're opening their eyes, you're opening their minds because they've been trapped into a small box of really not understanding money. And by not understanding money, they're not financially well off. They're financially illiterate. And that just is a perfect position for the financial industry and the banks to continue to make a lot of money off the general United States public. You want to do all this in a way that empowers people. You don't want to talk down to people. And even if you have something to relay or their side about them, use another person as an example. You want to tell stories, other clients, other prospects, help them understand. And like I said, you want to really lay out a path that once this bad information has been corrected with good information, once they have the blueprint for success, once they have the action plan, you want it to be an empowering moment for them. And along the way, this is one of the most important things. Speak their language, not yours. If you get into a lot of like illustration talk and financial jargon, you're going to lose people. Remember, if people fear money and you start talking outside of what they understand, they're not going to start asking you questions. They're just going to shut down, paralyze, and do the exact opposite of what you want. You want the action step? They're not going to take any action at all. A lot of times in the early parts of talking to people, when you're able to talk, 
because remember they're doing most of the talking because that's going to uncover things that you have solutions for. A lot of times all I'm doing is interjecting, Hey, yes, please tell me more about that. Can you expand upon that? Because once you have something, once you identify the client need, like we we're just talking about, you can lay out the requirements. Also, you know, speaking their language is important, but understanding that different types of words have different types of power and they, you know, kind of bring up different emotions in people. So, you know, product versus solution, price versus value, place versus access, promotion versus information. So in the art of communication, mastering the art of communication, you know, whether that be written, whether that be verbal, you want to understand that words have power and you want to replace some of these words with negative connotations to create more of a positive connotation um, and help them understand, once again, you know, cost and price is one thing, value is another. And then also remember, you're going to have good days, bad days, really bad days, really great days. You know, it's a roller coaster ride as an entrepreneur, as a business owner. But what you have to keep in mind is that you have to, you know, you could be saying the same thing that you've said 500 times, but you have to understand that this person that you're talking to is going to be hearing it for the first time. So there's different ways to say the same words and, uh, you know, relay, uh, relay the same information over to the other side. You want to do something that evokes emotion, that inspires people, that motivates people versus just that boring matter of fact language that does absolutely nothing for anybody. It's just remember connecting somebody from where they are right now to where they wanna be. Where are they right now? They're not financially well off. Where do they wanna be? They want financial wellness. They want financial freedom. They wanna use money as a tool to get them what they want. This is what it looks like, guys. You're just mapping out a money trail for them and you're showing them how to you know, take control of their money, unlock the power of their money, get rid of their debt, build wealth, all the things that are gonna allow them to create that financial wellness slice of the entire wellness pie in a way that has a positive bleed over effect to the other wellness parts. You have to ask yourself, as you're talking with the person, you just ask yourself a question in your head, you know, what emotion will this product give this customer? Everybody's different. If you're acting in a persona, which we'll talk about in just a minute, it's a lot easier, but you always have to remember, this is not about you. You gotta understand and identify your customer's desired emotion. You have to paint a picture and remember, tell stories, not just a bunch of facts, that's boring. Tell stories, talk about clients, Talk about prospects that didn't take up the opportunity. What happened to them? Uh, and close the sale. Happy customers, motivated customers, inspired clients. They're going to spend more money with you. So you have to really know what are you selling? And you know it's different for different types of people. Once again, if you're acting in a certain persona and operating a persona, it's probably the same thing over and over and over again. But what are you really selling? And then why would somebody buy from you? What are you selling? Why would they buy from you? Those are two important questions that need to be answered and identified during this entire process of taking somebody from a prospect to a client. If you're operating a persona, once again, that's one of the most important things that I can just keep drilling down into you guys. Just don't have random conversations with random people because if you develop a persona, then you can start to understand that persona. Then you can start to do what we call preemptively overcoming objections and rebuttals and obstacles because the best defense is gonna be a good offense. One of the ways that you can really take control of a conversation is to learn how to not sell somebody something, how to approve them as a client and some of the things that you can do. And ask for their permission. Say, if you don't mind me, I would like to go through, You know, we have expectations for our clients. We have expectations for our partners. If you don't mind, I'd like to run through these expectations and just get some feedback from you and make sure that there's nothing on this list that you know, that we can't work together on that, that we won't be able to commit it to see together. So we have expectations. And then I also want to lay out, hey, I've got some reasons and I've got some, you know, ideas about why people would not be successful working with us, using our coaching, using the technology, using the solution, go down through there. Is there any of these that you think that you might have a problem with? Once again, you're taking away because approving somebody as a client is a lot more of an exclusive club than just trying to sell everybody something. And when you start to get in the habit of approving people, helping them understand who you take on, why, that you invest time, energy, resources in these people, it's no longer a sales presentation, it's a qualification approval process. And that puts you in a power position. You know, even though that you're 
in a persona and you're preemptively overcoming some of this stuff, you're still going to have objections. So remember, objections are just buying questions. People want this stuff. They're just scared of money. They're scared of making the wrong decisions and choices. So the objections will come up, but those are actually buying questions. Move through those, under those, over those, however you ma uh, maneuver. Get over the objections. Handle them not in a group. Identify them one-on-one. -on -one, pick off each objection so there's none left. And then we can move to the next action step. At some point, guys, there is decision time. And this is one of a lot of people's biggest problems. Just close the deal. If you've done your job, you've done the marketing, you've created the lead generation, you've disqualified the wrong parties, you've approved the right parties, at some point, you got to close the deal. 85% of interaction between sales representatives and potential buyers in without the representative ever asking for a sale. How crazy and ludicrous does that sound? If you've done your job, ask for the sale. And then if they're not, if you've painted a picture, you've done everything you need to do, you show them how to get what they want, they can't have it all the ways. They can't choose this way and that way. They can't have it both ways. So if they're starting to make a decision that sounds crazy to your side or it's the incorrect decision based on the solutions that we put on the table for them, walk them through that. Okay, I understand this is the way you're leaning. Let's talk about what that looks like now and going forward. You have to talk them through their bad decisions because a lot of times just talking with them and helping them understand what that decision is going to mean for them will kind of hockey check their mind. Oh, yeah. I've already done that. That's not working for me. Throughout the process, it's called a learning process because it's very easy. You just have to learn the information you need to relay. You need to do that in a way, like I said, that paints pictures, that tells stories. You need to learn transitions so that it doesn't seem choppy, that it seems like a smooth kind of A to Z process. You need to understand and identify the reasons people would take action steps or would not take action steps. And then you need to learn some closings. And once you do that, it's very easy to build. As long as you're duplicatable, replicatable, whatever it is that you guys want to call it, somebody comes to you and says, hey, what do you do for your business? And you can't tell them in a clear, concise, articulate way that has a, you know, kind of like a digital factory pipeline to it. Um, you know, it's going to be hard for you to build agencies because when somebody comes you, and asks you that question, you need to be able to lay it out. It is exactly what I do. Let me show you. We kind of explained to you as I built this, what worked for me, what didn't, why your job as an agency builder is to create success and then trailblaze the path and teach other people how to get there, creating a better generational opportunity. If you ran into problems and you can preemptively help other people overcome those, then it gets better and better and better. And the nationwide distribution gets quicker and it gains velocity. You're still in a contact business. Doesn't matter you know, how you view your business model, what you're concentrated on, you still have to learn how to open your mouth and talk to people. And that means that you master the concept and the art of opening, continuing, and directing communication. And we've talked about the pyramid of kind of influencing or increasing the flow of your pipeline. We talked about how this is a very easy to follow pyramid. The rapport, trust, and credibility can be, be, can be built in the first few minutes. It can also be built before somebody ever meets you online. Once again, a strong online presence will help you guys. Let them talk. Get the information out. That information will uncover a problem that you can now present a solution and an action step for. If you reverse engineer and dissect, dissect all this backwards, all components equal mastery. This pyramid works, guys. If you learn it, if you print it out, if you understand each step, this is a way how you can increase the flow of your pipeline. you got to target specific people. You know, if you're having random conversations with random people and random outcomes. It's hard to become a producer. It's really hard to become an agency builder. So who are these people? What do they want? Where are they? How many of them are there? You know, this is not a small niche problem that we're trying to um, help people with. This is a huge problem. So if most everybody's having the same problem, you just identify within that problem certain types of personas. Hey, you are X. We help X with Y. You know, that's very, very easy, guys. And the persona will keep you from wasting your time. And it will get you to the point that you can master what you're doing. Instead of just going out there and having hacks, you know, a bunch of swings, random swings. Now you're really identifying who these people are. Where are they? What do they want? What's my message to them? And then once you do that, you can just start going and really perfecting and mastering that persona. And that will help you identify some of those things like preemptively overcoming, you know, you're going to know more about them eventually than they probably know about themselves. On the front end, 
you know, it's really hard to get people to take notice. So, you know, Billy Mays, he was a pitch man. He started on the, I think the Atlantic City boardwalk. Think about that on a boardwalk. People are walking by. How do you get people to stop? Well, you either ask them a question that most everybody would answer positively or negatively too. So in the money game, hey, do you love paying taxes? Do you hate paying taxes? Do you love paying your mortgage payment? Do you hate paying your mortgage payment? These are questions that most everybody would answer positively or negatively. And then once you understand the art of really opening these conversations, getting some initial feedback or an answer, you can start to raise awareness. What is awareness? Well, awareness is, hey, you can shield yourself from tax liability. You know, my myself and my clients, you know, we're close to not making mortgage payments. You know, so identify the problem, raise the awareness of the solution, and then really help people understand where you are right now is just the cumulative effect of all your little money choices up to right now. Going forward, it's going to be the repeated pattern. The only difference is you have an opportunity to draw a line in the sand right now and take an alternate choice because the cumulative effect of a lot of good money choices is going to lead you where you want. The repeated pattern of what you're doing right now is going to lead you to more of what you don't want. It's all about either burning through your money, not care about it, or unlocking and stacking money going forward. Most people are going to continue to burn through their money, work for the bank. Myself and our clients, we're going to work as the bank. And when you work as the bank, you start to enrich yourself. Guys, the financial wellness game is all about relationships. It's relationships with employees. It's relationships with employers, helping everybody you can understand, helping them all understand how this can work and benefit all parties involved. Focus on relationships. Focus on building an authentic brand. People you know, can see through all the fakeness. Online, you want to be authentic and you want to be consistent. Build your brand over time. Have fun with this. And really understand that you don't have to get fancy in the beginning. You, know, you can make an incredible business just off the email and phone. I know that sounds weird with all the social media and everything that we have access to, but you can build a dynamic, abundant, affluent business just by using email and the phone and then, you know, meeting people online when necessary. All the rest of the stuff, social media, landing pages, websites, paid ads, that can come later. You can start. I think a lot of people use this as a justification to procrastinate, not getting started on their business. Email and phone, we all have that. Now we have no reason not to get started, right? And if we're going to start with things like email and phone, subject line matters. If you have a great email, great call to action, great solution, all this stuff is great in the email, but your subject line sucks. Nobody's ever, ever going to open it and see. And once again, artificial intelligence, things online can help you just craft some catchy um, subject lines for your emails. At the end of the day, you concentrate on what you control, which is your activities, which is getting better at what you do, the results. Who knows? Right. But if we're doing our job, if we're disqualifying, if we're qualifying, if we're approving, if we're selecting, if we're doing all the things that we need to do, the results will take care of themselves. You have good outcomes, bad outcomes. The key is to have either good or bad outcomes. Don't let things just sit on the table with no outcome at all. That's that's a big part of lost revenue and income. So make people decide if it's the wrong decision. You can't talk about it, whatever. They just have to go. But they don't get the choice of making no choice. Agency in Motion continuing education series, operating, managing, and building agencies in the digital environment.